sophomore honors nerdlets. It's Mr. Stewart here. Hope everything's going well for you, or relatively well. If you think that Mr. Stewart is in his library here, this is just the background. I have anyway. Um, I was going to read the prologue to uh, Sky Fisherman to you. So hopefully my allergies don't get in the way. Allergies are killing me right now. So hopefully my reading the prologue doesn't um, dissuade you to read the novel. Um, hopefully you give it a shot. Of course, there's an audio version of it as well that I'm posting on Google Classroom. All right, are you ready? And I'm just reading the prologue, not the whole book. I don't have that kind of time. I need my glasses, right? I'm getting old. Prologue. The neon trout blinks off and on, advertising my Uncle Jake's guide service and store. Near the railroad tracks, wheat elevators, and a flour mill mark the biscuit company where my mother worked. Early sunlight flashes off a silver passenger train crossing the trestle. From the high bluffs, gateway looks about the same. After the steep descent into town, I see change. The Oasis offers espresso for the river rafters. Homer's Bakery has moved into a modern grocery store, and I want a jelly roll. But they stopped making them when Homer retired. The shabby house where my mother and I hope to start a new life has been raised for a fast food chain. The Phoenix stands dark. At least my mother's new place contains the old icons. Ivory soap, Lipton tea, yellow curtains, a separate hand towel for each guest. Later, I will visit my uncle's store. Even now, I know baseball gloves, rich leather smell, the ice machines whir and clink, the worm beds, earthy odors, fishing tackles, bright allure. An old moosehead trophy has replaced Juniper Tiwa's haunting painting of Calum at the All Indian Basketball Tournament. Seated at the Weekly Gazette, I pore over yellowed newspapers to see if memory matches facts or whether my imagination has transformed those past events into myths. Pleased, the young editor offers her help and a cup of herbal tea. Which year was it? she asks. I can't believe she doesn't know. If not for Billiam Bruised Head and Jake, the entire town might have been lost. Reading old accounts, I nod as detail after detail rings true. I recognize familiar faces among the volunteers who braced shoulders against the disasters. One photo astonishes me. A tiny biplane emerges from billowing thunderheads of smoke. How could it survive that inferno? The photographer is long dead, but he left one hell of a shot. I hear the steerman's radial engine whine, the warning shouts of ruddy-faced men. I smell char. Buzzy has given up flying, I learn. Impossible. For me, he remains forever bursting from the smoke, caught in time. Billiam could be right. You white guys have a screwball notion, he says. For you, time's a damn straight line. For us, it's more like a wheel turning round. Everything you call the past is still happening right now. No use running. Well, hopefully that gets you into the novel, and hopefully you're already reading it before you're watching this. Anyway, Mr. Stewart out. <laughs>